Hey y'all, this is Bill here at PowerStrokeHelp.com. I'm here again, Tom Brown, Lubrication Special, Lubrication what now? Certified Lubrication Specialist. Certified Lubrication Specialist. But we're not going to talk about lubrication today. We're going to talk about his coolant and the absolute psychotic mess that exists in the coolant world. I get probably 30 emails, 40 emails a week about, should I run this coolant? Should I run that coolant? Okay. That's an extremely difficult question to answer. Uh, and what we're going to attempt to do here, Tom's going to attempt to do here today, is explain all the different types of coolants, what's important about coolant, and uh, what works and what doesn't. Um, uh, the biggest thing about coolant is, is that if you change a coolant or if, you, if, you, if you're work going from one coolant to another, the number one thing is, is that you have to make sure you flush it completely with distilled water. Absolutely, completely flush the system. Because if you don't, and the, the two different coolants, the coolant that was previously in the system and the coolant that you put in the system are incompatible. What will happen is, is that particulates will fall out, it will clog your oil cooler, it will clog your radiator, clog your heater core. I get lots and lots of those type of emails. My heat's no longer working, I got really high uh, engine oil temperatures, you know, I don't know what happened. And, I, and then the next question I ask them is, is, tell me about the coolant. Well, I just bought the truck. Oh, okay, well somebody played games with the coolant somewhere along the way, you got to put an oil cooler in it, a heater core radiator you got to go clean the system out it's a real disaster when you start mixing incompatible coolant so coolant is absolutely crucial uh, especially to the later model trucks uh, that that require uh, uh, absolutely correct working cooling system because of the emissions control systems because they run so hot so Tom here is going to lead you through all of the craziness that has gone on in regard to coolant um, all the way back to the old school IDI stuff, which is not a power stroke, but we will talk about it all the way through power strokes uh, and, and, and then into the 6, 7 and into the later stuff. So, Tom, thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. Certified coolant specialist. Are you a certified uh, coolant specialist? No, I don't want to be either. Okay. All right, as Bill mentioned a little while ago, my name is Tom Brown and I am a certified lubrication specialist. But today we want to talk about coolant. Uh, and as I was joking with Bill as we were getting set up this morning, you know, I've been doing lubrication and filtration work now full-time serious for about 12 years and really all my life because I grew up around farm equipment and cars and everything else. But nothing has hurt my head more than trying to figure out the coolant history on Ford diesel engines. Uh, it is crazy. And so I thought, you know, if, if I'm having this much trouble with this, uh, the owners out there have got to be going nuts with this as well. So what I want to talk about today is engine type by engine type, what coolant does Ford call for in those, uh, and along with the other chemicals and cleaners that the Ford wants you to use in there. Let me caution you right up front. I'm not going to talk about a whole bunch of other types of coolant. I'm only going to talk about what does Ford call for. The range of possibilities out there is endless. There's Caterpillar, there's all kinds of other extended life coolant. There's rows of coolant on your auto parts store and Walmart and everything else. So what, but what I'm gonna talk about is what does Ford call for? And then you can cross-reference, you can either use the Ford product or cross-reference the Ford product to whatever you're using. But I cannot in anything less than probably about a week cover every coolant that's out there. So I'm not even gonna try. Um, so over here on the left, Starting at the top, what we're talking about is in this first column is the oldest engines, 6.9, 7.3 IDIs, and 7.3 power strokes that have an engine serial number of 940613 or less. Uh, and just so you know, that changeover date happened on the second day of February in 1999. Uh, and remember, this is an engine serial number, not a vehicle serial number. And the reason that they made the change was that they, they made these engines uh, compatible with extended life coolant. And the problem child that was running around out there was an acid known as 2EH. And so you chemists out there can, uh, can look that up, or if you don't already know what it is, for the rest of us, don't worry about it. Um, just as a comparison though, that engine number was not the same as when the 99 and a half 7.3s came out, which was the greatly enhanced last version of the 7.3. Those engines have a engine serial number of 896812 or higher. 
Um, so there, there's two different dates out there in the 7.3 land. One is for when the engine got changed and the other one is for when the, uh, all the seals and gaskets in the engines got changed to be compatible with extended life coolant. Down on this row here we're going to talk about coolant. Then we're going to talk about the additives and maintenance chemicals that are used with that coolant. And down here at the bottom, I want to talk about what is the service schedule for that engine with that coolant. And right up front, I'm going to tell you, I am assuming that all of you are operating in a severe duty cycle. Because the vast majority of you are, even if you don't know it. If you look up what is severe duty in your engine owner's manual or your vehicle owner's manual, Almost all of you will fall into at least one of the categories of severe duty, which puts you into that maintenance cycle. So on these, let's start off here. On these oldest engines, 6.9, 7.3 IDI, and the 7.3 power strokes before this date up here, before this engine number up here, they came from the factory from Ford with a conventional what you would think of, and this is dangerous when you use colors with coolants because they have gotten so uh, con convoluted. But in general, Ford conventional coolant is usually green. The VC5 is the Ford uh, name for that coolant. It is an inorganic technology. And these engines are not compatible with extended life coolants because of this acid up here that I mentioned, the 2EH acid. So when you put those, that conventional coolant in these engines, you also have to add a supplemental coolant additive. The Ford uh, name for that is VC8. Uh, now, there are a lot of other alternatives out there on the market for these two products. Again, I'm just using the Ford name and product name so that you can then cross-reference that if you want to use something else besides the Motorcraft product. Um, the additives and maintenance chemicals, uh, first one would be the supplemental coolant additive. If you were going to do a flush, the Ford calls that the VC1. And then the iron cleaner, which you don't, you don't have to use this all the time. It's really only if you have really hard, rusty water problems. Um, and so that is VC9. That goes inside the engine and cleans the rust out of the block and heads. Um, but here's the thing that is probably most alarming. That when you are running conventional coolant and supplemental coolant additives in one of these three engines under severe duty conditions you have to change that coolant and the supplemental coolant additives every 15,000 miles and that's all of it that's not just draining the radiator and uh, getting out you know probably about half of it that's the entire cooling system every 15,000 miles to me that seems like a lot but that's what Ford calls for because what happens is like what Bill was talking about. The pressure and the heat that these engines put on their cooling systems will cause the particulates in this uh, coolant to fall out of suspension. Uh, and then it starts plugging up things. Next one I want to cover is power stroke, seven point, excuse me, 7.3 power strokes with an engine serial number of 940614 and higher. They came from the factory with the same coolant, the same Ford conventional coolant and supplemental coolant additives. However, these engines are SCA or extended life coolant compatible. So you can switch them over to uh, like the gold coolant that we're going to talk about here in a minute and not have a problem. Um, same uh, chemicals and the same service schedule. So every 15,000 miles, you're doing a complete cooling system uh, service on this truck. There's one little exception here on 7.3s uh, that, that at the very end of the 7.3 production cycle at the Kentucky plant only, but that's where most of these trucks were made, um, those 7.3s in the 02 and 03 model year, that's what MY stands for, uh, were factory filled with gold coolant. Uh, and the gold coolant is a hybrid organic acid technology. Uh, and the hybrid means that it's a mixture of inorganic and organic technology uh, in, into a single solution. And so those trucks came with this gold coolant. Same chemicals, you still have to use supplemental cooling additives with this coolant. And 
the same service schedule. Um, this is one of the things, I, I circled this down here though in red because I want you to go back and check your owner's manual if you have one for this truck uh, because to me that doesn't make sense. If you're using a gold coolant in a 7.3, you ought to be able to use a longer service schedule, but that's what it's calling for in the resources that I have. So go back and check your owner's manual. 6.0 and 6.4 engines came factory filled with Ford Motorcraft Gold Coolant that meets this specification number right here. Uh, and again, that is a hybrid organic acid technology. It's a mixture of inorganic acids and organic acids. And it uses the same supplemental coolant additives, the same flush chemical, and the same block cleaner as the 7.3s we're using. Down here on the service schedule for this, the 6.0s and the 6.4s are slightly different. Don't know why, uh, that was just something Ford was doing at this point. Um, they want you to test the coolant every 15,000 miles using the Rotunda 328-2050 test strip, very easy to use, uh, and they want you to change the coolant every 45,000 miles. Again, this is under severe duty conditions. The 6.4s, you get a little bit longer. Uh, they want you to test it every 20,000 and change it every 60,000. Uh, and again, this is the Ford Gold Coolant. And the last one I want to talk about from a Ford perspective is the 6.7s. Um, they came from the factory with what is known as orange coolant. Um, it is also a hybrid organic acid technology coolant, um, but it's like a second generation away from the gold. Uh, and so instead of using a supplemental coolant additive, it uses a product called Coolant Revitalizer. It is similar to an SCA from the what it does. It basically refreshes or revitalizes the coolant to allow you to run it longer. Uh, but the flush chemical and the iron cleaner that you were using on your previous generation trucks is still available to use on these 6.7s as well. Uh, from a service schedule, we've gone back to a testing every 15,000 and changing every 45,000. However, because this is a second generation uh, hybrid organic acid technology, also known as an extended life coolant, uh, you have to use a different test strip. Uh, the Rotunda 328-071 ELC, and that's extended life coolant. Um, so again, that was the 6.7s. Last thing I want to talk about today is another option that you have uh, in place of, or instead of all of these different Ford coolants. And this is not just applicable to your uh, Ford diesel power stroke trucks. This is applicable to any car you have, basically. That's why I put the word all up here. Polyorganic coolants are a relatively new product that's on the market. They do not contain any organic acids, uh, and you do not have to use any SCAs or supplemental coolant additives in them, even if you're running these in a heavy-duty diesel engine. Uh, you can still utilize the flush and the, the flush chemical and the block cleaner in preparation or in between services on this. But here's the big thing on the new coolants. You have a change interval of five years or 150,000 miles and no testing required. You could probably actually test these at 150 and go even longer. Uh, these are incredible new products. Uh, they really simplify your uh, service and they're also much better for your cooling system because as Bill mentioned earlier, a lot of these old coolants have particulate matter floating in them that will come out of suspension and start plugging up things like oil coolers and heater cores, radiators and things like that. These new or, uh, polyorganic coolants do not contain any of those, so there's nothing in there to come out of suspension. There's no particulate matter that's gonna drop out of suspension and start clogging up stuff and the maintenance requirements on it is much less and you get much greater life out of them. And the cost on them is very comparable to the other extended life coolants that's on the market. So it really does make for a, a very good product, good price, and your service interval is just so much better. If you have a question about these polyorganics, please contact me through my website and I'll come up here to the top. Again, my name is Tom Brown. I am a certified lubrication specialist and my website is best-synthetic-oils.com. Uh, you can contact me through there. 
Uh, I also have a YouTube channel with that same name. Uh, send me an email. You can call me through my phone number on there as well. Uh, I'll be happy to talk with you about these, uh, any of these coolant strategies, especially the polyorganics. Uh, that is the latest thing out there and one that I recommend the most for any of these trucks. Thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos from Bill and I. Also, if you're watching my videos and you're not watching them on PowerStrokeHelp.com, you're really missing where the action is. You need to go to the website PowerStrokeHelp.com and check us out because there's a lot of information on there that could be very useful to you as a PowerStroke owner to keep your truck on the road as long as possible. Remember, if you press the Arch Oil button, all the proceeds from Arch Oil uh, go to help train a vet, the nonprofit organization that I run, to help veterans ease their way back into civilian life. Thank you for all your support for making PowerStrokeHelp.com the number one stop for PowerStroke owners on the internet.